Hello everybody, Numismatic Stacker here. Today we're going to be talking about what are the best types of silver and uh, I'm going to talk about maybe I talk about pennies as well. Some that are great and some that aren't so good. So I'm going to do my best on what I think is awesome. We're going to start with uh, smaller denominations and work our way up. So let's go. Welcome back. So if you are a coin collector and a silver stacker, you're probably thinking, what is the best thing that I can buy for my money? And I would have to start with dimes because um, they have the smallest premium possible. Actually, most of the time when I buy them in, in large quantities, I'm not, I mean, seriously, large quantities, um, you can get them for spot. Um, when it comes to mercury dimes, how, now you notice how how much these are kind of worn down. Now, if you bought these by the roll, you're only going to get 50 in a roll. There's going to be a gap at the top of that roll. Do you see what I'm saying? Because of the wear. So if I buy them by the bag and they put them on a scale, I'm not going to lose any money. I'm going to get. I'm paying for every penny of silver that I possibly can. Over here is a reference. So these are Roosevelt dimes. Roosevelt dimes, people like to dismiss them because, you know, they're not that interesting. They're not that old, you know. But the thing is, if you're silver stacking, you're getting them uh, in mint condition like this, you're getting a lot more silver. And there are RPMs and double dies to look for on uh, these coins as well. If you uh, watch my channel a lot, you start to learn these things. Um, but the point is... Uh, for a newbie, if you are collecting silver, dimes are the cheapest by far, the least amount of premiums. So, um, and then when it comes to uh, the next step up, you want to start getting your key dates. Um, but the 16D here, um, in, in the last um, couple of years, it's been at the lowest point for a long time. This coin used to be worth a couple hundred more dollars like 10 years ago. But I believe the coin is going to start to go up a little bit. But usually in these uh, uh, lower grades like this, the premium stayed down. So something like this is going to move very, very slowly. But it's an easy flip because um, it's it's very rare. They only made, uh, I can't remember, they didn't make too many of them. But... It's very important to have the key dates on any series. And also the fun thing is when you're buying um, bags of silver, you can almost find every single date, which is really fun. And having the whole book is a fantastic thing to have. I, on the other hand, if you don't have all of them, the key dates are the most important. The 21s, the 31s, and the 1916D when it comes to mercury dimes. And the better shape, the better as well. I do have examples that are uncirculated uh, way beyond this. Uh, you get full bands on the on the reverse. Um, that's even more, uh, more special. Um, and Mint State 67, I do have a couple of those as well. But now we're going to move on to the next subject. Now I'm going to talk about Lincoln Wheat Cents. What is so special about these? Everybody loves to collect them. You find them still today, coin roll hunting. As you can see, I, I, I used to have a lot more, and I sold a lot of them at a coin show for about three cents a piece. That's right, I only got about three cents. Um, that's basically their, they're just, you know, the plain Jane, common dates, you know. Um, and that's basically all I believe they're worth, and that's what I was easily being able to sell them for that much. Um, let's move this to the side here. Um, now, this is a complete set from 1909 to 1940. Now, from page two and page three, the only important one to have is the 1922 and the 1931S. If you're missing some of these other ones in here, don't go and buy them. Just keep on coin roll hunting until you get them. The only one that's important is to get in the key dates. One, two... Three, four, and five. So you got the 1909 SVDB, which we have right here. 1909 S, 1914 D, 1922, and the 1931 S. Those are really the only ones that you're really interested in, um, other than 
collecting all the rest of them. Um, here's the thing, you know, you can go to a coin shop, they have them all, multiples of all of them. Um, they're a very shallow market when it comes to selling them. A lot of people say they want a 1909 SVDB, and I see them on Facebook, and uh, they're, they're trying to sell them on an auction. You know, all I see on, on the comments is bump, 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 bump. That means they're just passing on it because they're really just not quite interested in them. Even like the modern day ones, like a, like 2011 Double Diaverse, maybe it has a value of around 90 bucks in Mint State 66, graded by Annex. I see those going up on silent auctions on Facebook as well. What do I see? Bump, 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 bump. Like I said, and it's a very shallow market. It's a, it, 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 it takes a, 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 a collector that's really interested in that specific thing. That's why I believe, you know, the silver is much better. It's easy to liquidate. And uh, even my wholesaler, he won't take any of my pennies. He only is interested in silver and gold. That's all he's interested in. But uh, in, you may agree with me, you may not, but I've been collecting these for 30 years. And I just think it's a big thumbs down when it comes to some sort of an investment. This is more of like a hobby. Collecting pennies is a fun hobby. I enjoy doing it as well. I enjoy going through coins when the bank is open and I can actually go and acquire uh, boxes of pennies to go through. I think it's a lot of fun. But for investment purposes, those five that I just mentioned are the ones you really want. And try and get them in the best grade as you can because um, they do start getting pretty expensive. <laughs> now I'm going to talk about Franklin Half Dollars. Yes, I'm starting to really love Franklin Half Dollars in the past few years. Really starting to love them, and I'm going to tell you why, because you can still get them fairly cheap. Um, I'd say 8 9 bucks for average condition if you buy a large quantity, a large bag of them, but if you're buying them individually, um, you're going to be paying more premium. I'm telling you, you will be. Your best bet if you want to get a complete set is you just buy, say, a, a couple hundred of them at a time and you see how far you can get. Maybe you only need to buy a 55, but you can get every single one. But the cool thing about these, if you buy them in mint condition, you can be looking for what's called obverse die clashes or the Bugs Bunny variety. So if you got them in mint state 63, you're, you're paying 12 bucks a coin in mint condition like this. A coin could be worth 70 bucks a piece, if not 50, 60, depends on the date, right? So in retrospect, um, some of those coins, you can have a net profit of nearly $58 versus buying bullion. Bullion's only worth what silver is. Say silver is at 26 and you're buying bullion rounds for 32, 33. Well, that bullion round is still only worth 26, even though you're paying that extra premium on those coins. That's why I like to stack numismatic coins. And being educated and knowing about varieties is something that I really like to do. Um, say silver gets too high, I don't want to buy no more. Then I'm going to go through my inventory on coins that I want to grade that have those varieties. And for something like that that's only worth 70 bucks, my best bet is to go to Annex. They are the cheapest grading company uh, that's actually respectable. That's the one I would like to go to. If anything, I think I believe it's worth over 100 bucks or more, then I'll take it to NGC or PCGS. So I've done lots of videos about Franklin Half Dollars. Here's one up here if you want to be interested. I've done a, I've done a search and found Bugs Bunny varieties. As a matter of fact, this roll has about seven of them in here. Real life, finding a, uh, you know, buying a mint condition roll of these, and I'm scoring on some awesome varieties that we need to know. Uh, I'm teaching everybody about all those, all those things, so you can uh, get better bang for your buck, so to speak. I think it's a fantastic investment because. Uh, you're just adding more power into your investment by knowing what you have. I'm going to talk about Washington quarters. Now, the only three that are very important is the 32, the 32S, and the 38S. The um, rest of them I find on coin roll hunting uh, through bags of silver coins. 
Um, and I always want to look for the 1941 uh, that has a double die. There's, an, there's one on the 42D that has a double die. And the 1943 everybody knows about. Actually, it's the P, D, and, uh, the P and the S that have a double die verse. Now, also the 1934, you got the... the uh, the weak motto, the medium motto, and the strong motto. Um, they were just trying to experiment when they when they went through this first phase here to see what would work the best. So um, there's three different varieties on that one. Otherwise, there's not too much about uh, silver quarters other other than they're pretty tough. They're pretty tough to find coin roll hunting, but you know I can get them for a pretty low premium. It's just a smidge higher than it is for uh, silver dimes, but. There's still a lot of fun to go through, and uh, when you get to these uh, other dates, like beyond, like in the mid 50s to the early 60s, you can find what's called the Type B reverse, which is like a proof reverse. Um, I do, I have found probably close to a dozen of those. Um, they're worth a little bit more, maybe 15 bucks. They're not worth too much because the condition is what matters on any coins that you're buying. So um, <clears throat> the Standing Liberty quarters. If you buy a roll of those, again, it's kind of like the Mercury Dime because they're so worn down, they're thin. So if you buy 50 of them versus 50 of these, obviously um, you're going to get them in better condition. Um, the roll is going to be full. So if you get a Standing Liberty Quarters and you get the same amount, you're going to have a gap at the top because they, sh they shrink down because of all the wear. So you're better off just buying a whole bag of quarters to go searching through them because, again, you want to buy them by the weight. So you just put them on a scale, that's what I'm going to pay. That's the best way to go. I'm going to touch base on Jefferson Nichols. I see lots of uh, YouTubers that I love watching them coin roll hunt and try and fill up a book. I do have a complete set here. It took me a long time. And honestly, there's probably two or three of them in here that I, I just bought at a, at a swap meet somewhere. And I like to trade them anyways. I, 1950Ds, I like to get those for, I could probably get them for like 7 bucks a piece or whatever. But um, silver ones, yeah, I like to get some... It never really comes to my mind because I find so many of them. I got like, actually, I found like four or five rolls of them while I was coin roll hunting for nickels. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, U.S. Mint sets, that's the way to go. This is a 1979 Full Steps. This thing's amazing. Um, this coin, I believe, is worth close to $300. It dwarfs everything that's in that book. And here's the Full Steps on here. I just got lucky, so... Mewis mint sets are pretty cheap, um, but there's the full steps right there. Let's try and zoom in a little tiny bit more so you know what I'm talking about. So this means it just has a full strike. Isn't that beautiful? So um, you can get lucky. There's a If you go to PCGS, you need to have them in mint condition. There's a listing. If you hit the plus, it'll show you which full steps ones are worth the most. Now, I know in the 1950s, they get pretty tough, like the 53S, 53D. Um, those are really, really tough to get in, uh, with full steps. And actually, the 1969, 1968, there's only like one known example, which is worth a billion dollars. You know, it's worth a lot of money. So, um, Jefferson Nichols are very, very fun. Um, if you look for the right kinds, uh, you can make a lot of money on them. Oh yes, the Standing Liberty Half Dollar, or Walking Liberty Half Dollar. Um, it's still in the works. I still do not have every single date made, but I'm telling you right now, you got to get the 21s. Those are the rare ones. Um, the 38S is on, uh, the 38D is on the other book. But then you want to try and get these ones that are from 1919 and to 1916. These are the ones you want on the first page. I'm still missing two. But uh, these are the harder one to find. So you can go to a coin shops, and sometimes they only got like uh, one or two of there. Um, 16s are really, really important to have. If you don't even have any uh, Walking Liberty half dollars, just get one 1916 because it is worth its money. Um, the better condition, the better. And I and I look and I make sure I don't have them cleaned because that's what I want. I'm a newsmatic collector, and if it's in great shape, I want to buy it. Um, so try and get them in the best condition possible. Again, if you are a, a silver stacker as well, like coins like these are in a little bit better condition than these ones that are worn down. Again, it's the same thing as the uh, Mercury Dimes and the Standing Liberty Quarters. If you buy them by the roll, you're going to get less silver 
versus having like Franklin's because Franklin's are newer. Um, you're going to have less wear, even like the 1964 uh, Kennedy half dollars. They have a lot more silver on them because it's usually the, generally those aren't worn down so much. You still find them uh, coin roll hunting through boxes of half dollars as well. And on occasion you'll find uh, a walking Liberty half dollar here and there, but I'm just giving you my opinion where some of the best ones to get. And there's some varieties. There's not very many, but if you look hard enough through PCGS, you can discover lots of varieties that are hidden in the Walking Liberty Half Dollar series. And of course, I can't leave out silver dollars. Even if you're buying them for constitutional prices, um, there's things called VAMs. Um, you can go to VAM World, and there's lots of VAMs. They're, they're kind of like double dies and RPMs that you find on all the other denominations um, because the VAM is like the oldest guide. This was this predates all of the other varieties that, that we have moder in modern times. Um, so these are just rare ones, even though they're they're just you know constitutional style you know these are like um ones i don't mind handling some of them are mint condition in here like like that one dude like but this is like a a curse in city and i think it's really important if you get them even in this condition they still trade very well it's damaged it's got scratches on it i got a discount on this but it's it's a it's gonna easily trade i don't really care i mean carson cities are pretty darn rare here's another one um 1879 Carson city this is one of the semi key dates you want to say but uh it's cleaned and it's probably in very fine details condition um it's it still doesn't matter in carson cities i just uh i like them a lot um there's and you kind of want to go for 1902s and 1903s and 1904s um actually the 1904 is pretty common i actually got three in mint condition like mint say 63 or higher with not knowing that it was a low mintage year but it's it's getting tougher to find 1903 o's 1903 s's with the small s i mean there's lots of awesome ones that you can find um so if you buy enough like in constitutional grade um, you might get lucky and get something like that for paying for spot, which is fantastic. But it's really, really difficult to get Morgan dollars for spot. Um, you can get peace dollars for a little bit less. And the 1922 does have a lot of VAMs to look for um, that are worth a lot of money. And there's like 10 key ones on PCGS. All the rest of them are, they're just like belittled. You know, they don't have a lot of premium on them other than the, the price of silver and its, con its condition. So um, I don't really have any that are like super rare, like, you know, the um, the VAMs, but I wanted to show you guys a piece, do uh, a trade dollar that I do have in here. And the 1921 is very important. It's, I think it's in here too. You just got to bear with me until I find it. There it is. Trade dollar. So that one's mm, 225, a little bit higher than that. It's, it's you know, even in that condition, it's worth pretty dang, mon pretty dang good money. Oh, yeah. Oops. <laughs> 1899. This is the Philadelphia. Yeah, that's a rare one. That's a key date, but it is cleaned. It's in some somewhat decent condition, but yeah, these 1887s, I always look for the 1887 over S or uh, the six, but there's, oh yeah, I think this is a, this is a variety too. Um, yeah, this is the type, this is the second reverse, which is the reverse of 1878. As you can see, it's got the straight arrow Feathers, yep, that one's tough to find, but it's too bad it's got that spot right there, yikes. But uh, these are just my premium dollars, and you can find these in constitutional bags if you're lucky, you know what you're looking for. I do have probably 30 videos on Morgan dollars, so I just don't want to go too far in depth about Morgan dollars since I talk about them a lot. And uh, here's a video if you want to check that out, uh, just I have a fantastic large playlist about silver dollar education. So 
I would I would advise you guys to check some of those videos out if you have any questions on anything like that. Some of those videos will answer your questions. I have a email right here if you want to send me a picture. I will answer your questions, no problem. I see a lot of this stuff on Facebook. I uh, I answer a lot of them as well. So key dates are very important to have when you are collecting silver, constitutional silver, or quote unquote junk silver. It's not junk silver if you know what you're looking for. And uh, if you're new to this channel, please like, share, and subscribe. If you don't hit the bell thing, you're missing awesome newsmatic stacker action, so you're notified that a new video has popped up. It'll pop up on your mobile phone. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you for joining me today.